excited about today, you guys can see I'm in my home in Newport Beach and we have a special guest for you. But first, I wanna remind you that if you have not checked out our Facebook group, the Mommy Millionaire Community, there's so many amazing women in there that are ambitious and trying to support each other in business. So this is a completely free Facebook group that I love for you to join. So make sure to head over to Facebook to join today. How many times can I say join already in the first 30 seconds of this? All right, the review of the week comes from Amanda Hetzler. She says, I love this podcast. Kayla has the best energy and is so down to earth. It's so inspiring and makes me dream bigger and want more for my life and my families. And she gave us a five-star review. So Amanda, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to do that. That's how we get this podcast into more people's ears and help them create financial freedom in their life. So thank you. Okay, now on to today's guest. She is a part of the Mommy Millionaire Mastermind for 2020, and I'm really excited because she found me through this podcast. So it kind of comes full circle. She's now on the podcast and is going to be bringing you amazing tips. Her name is Brianna Kaler. You guys can find her on Instagram at Bits of Brie or just find her on YouTube at Brianna K. And the reason why I bring up her YouTube and nobody else's is because she has a quarter of a million subscribers with tens of millions of views on this channel. If you need help cleaning, organizing, decorating, she is your gal. You guys, she was able to quit her job as a teacher and come home to be with her two little kids and husband. And she's created a multiple six figure income doing YouTube, you guys. This is crazy. And she's gonna be teaching you guys today how you can do it too. So welcome, Brianna, to the show. Thank you so much for having me and having me at your house. It's beautiful. Thank you for coming. So you just arrived today. You came all the way from Cleveland, Ohio. And do you think you wanna to move to California or what? It's beautiful, especially this time of year in <laughs> Ohio. It's freezing, oh, there's yeah. snow. I even asked my Uber driver, can we please just drive up the PCH because it routed us another way. And I'm like, I just want to look at the ocean oh, and yeah. the sunshine and it's gorgeous here. This is the best place. So I'm glad you're here. Now, I know like you had to do a lot of work to get to this moment, right? Like, did you ever think you would be a part of like an entrepreneur mastermind? I always hoped. Oh. I'm a big believer in manifesting things. So ever since I was a little girl, I had always aspirations to be a businesswoman. One of those things I manifested was I'm going to have a corner office downtown, achieved that, which, so that was pretty cool. But I think every time I would listen to either a self-help podcast or hear somebody talk about a mastermind, I would be like, I want to join a mastermind someday. Mm -hmm. I just think it sounds amazing to be a part of women supporting women and growing together. So something I manifested that I'm so happy to say, Yay. here we are. Yay. Okay. So how did you get started in this YouTube world? Like, because when you were a kid, there was no YouTube. I know. It wasn't something I could manifest. Right. Like then, right? <laughs> you didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> I went to college for broadcast journalism. Okay. And by way of the economic recession around 2009, I applied to grad school and heard about Teach for America, which okay. was a program where... You could be a teacher if your degree wasn't in education. So what made you want to do that? What was like, I need to be a teacher then? Um, I was a first generation college student. So mm -hmm. I think there was always something in my heart that if I could help other people like me from a really humble background, be the first in their family to go to college and just have opportunity and sort of what you stand for, like that mm -hmm. economic freedom, it's actually really, really hard to achieve depending on where your kind of starting off point yep. is. So if I could help others see a pathway to college, I really wanted to be a part of that. Oh, and, I love that. Yeah, and that's really what Teach for America is all about. They recruit. So is that them. still a program right now? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's I think almost nearing its 30-year anniversary. Okay. But it initially started off recruiting at very elite colleges and universities, so the Ivy Leagues, and getting sort of the theory of change behind it is get the top graduates, so whoever's at the top of their class, go to be teachers and kind of with that kind of change the trajectory of kids growing up in poverty okay. across the country. So, okay, I like it. Yeah. So you're being a teacher and then how, I mean, you did that for a couple years and then you're yes. like, what? I was recruited by Teach for America to say, hey, you're from Ohio. We don't have any recruiters in Ohio. Would you be interested in recruiting from some of the colleges there? So, so then you kind of turn into a salesperson almost, right. right? You're like, hey, this is great to be a teacher. Take this salary. Like, how did you do that? How, like, how did you know enough to be like, this is, I could rock this out as a salesperson almost? Um, 
It's funny, I feel like my dad was a salesperson for his whole life. Aww. And when I would go on, like, take your child to work day, and I would just ask him, why are you so good at your job? He would say, I always learn about people, and I learn about their background and their family yeah. and, like, why they get out of bed in the morning. And then I can make the connection of, like, why they might need something. Oh, my gosh, yes. So <laughs> I feel like I, I got that him. advice yes. from him. And, yeah, just kind yeah. of ran with it and... I think it also helped. I was doing something I was very passionate about. I had done the job myself that I was recruiting mm -hmm. for. So I could really speak to here's what it looked like for me and learning people's stories, say here's why I think you would really enjoy this yeah. job too. So at that point, did you have kids yet? No. Okay, so you're like hustling, not having kids yet. Then you become an executive in the public school district, right? Right. Okay. And so this is where I would... That seems intense. Yeah, it's kind of part of, I think, one of your, why, how you're shameless in your business. Um, the head of HR for Teach for America was based in Cleveland. Okay. And I happened to hear from my manager, oh, maybe you could connect with her since you're both based in Cleveland and not that many people are. So we'd gone out for appetizers around the time when she got hired to be the chief talent officer. I reached out to congratulate her, and she goes, can you send me your resume? <gasps> wow. And so that's how it worked out. I, I'd started in a director role, and within a little over a year, had really just had, had kids yet, I'll be honest with you. So I was throwing my all into that right. job and got promoted to an executive role where I had that corner office and oh wore my, my blazer and my high heels every day, like I pictured as, you know, a middle school girl of this is what my life's going to look like Aww. someday. So. so you're in that. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, That's thanks. like most people would never be able to do that. But you got there because you were a people's like person almost, right? You're just like did the right thing and congratulated somebody. Yeah. A lot of people have been like, oh, gosh, you know. So that's amazing. Yeah. All right. There is something to that. I, and Tell I would me. say I had multiple points in my life where I either wasn't afraid to talk to the person in the leadership position and just address them person to person. Obviously, I wasn't disrespectful, but just get to know them and so that they knew who I was as well. Mm -hmm. But also never being that catty, competitive, undermining person. Like I think it goes a long way to mm -hmm. show kindness and be excited for someone else's success because then you never know when they might see an opportunity to bring you along. Yes. And to success too. Oh my gosh, that gave me chills when you said that. I love <laughs> that. Great advice. Hopefully you guys wrote that down. Now, um, you're in, in, in this executive role and do you have kids at this point? Um, I did. I had my first son. Okay, so is yeah. that that's where things started to change for you because you're like, okay, I don't like leaving and going to this corner office anymore. Uh, it wasn't that. It was oh. more YouTube kind of I really believe God led me to everything in my life. All of those jobs, I needed skills to do what I'm doing now. Um, it was I had him, and I was going back to work, and I had followed all these other YouTube moms' pregnancy updates where every week they would say, here's what I'm experiencing, and it just felt like I had girlfriends on YouTube hearing oh my their gosh, stories. So cute. And none of them are going back to work. All of them were stay-at-home moms. I understand now why, because right. they're good businesswomen with yeah. their YouTube channels. But I was like, maybe I'll just start putting out some videos for my son. I wanted to do monthly updates instead of a traditional baby book. I was just going to talk about them, sort of like the pregnancy updates, but baby book style. What a great idea. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started doing that and just sharing tidbits of like, and as a working mom, here's what I'm dealing with pumping, or here's something I'm dealing with having to travel for work and leaving my baby and how I feel about it. And that's when it started just kind of organically growing. Like It was truly just for me to look back on. Which I say, like, my YouTube then was all selfish just so I could look back on, so my kids could look back on someday. Aww. But then the people commenting who could just relate were like, I see your decor back there. Can you do a decoration tour? Like, how do you keep your house clean if you're working this, like, 9 yeah. to 5 job? And that's when I started doing some more of the, okay, behind the scenes, here's what I do on the weekends, or here's what I'm doing after work. How, so how long ago was this? What year was this? So my son will be 5 in April, so... It would be like four and a half years ago. Okay. So it was like around 2015. August of 2015. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this has happened like pretty quickly for you. Right. I mean, so, and then when did you quit your job? So it was summer of 2018. So three years of going hard at this YouTube thing. Yes. And then you're well, like. Well, I wouldn't say going hard. I, like, and that's where I would say it was truly pretty much up until that point just for me. It kind of grew. But you had to be making money in order to quit your job. Uh, right. Well, it kind of grew in waves because then I got pregnant with my daughter, my okay. second baby, and I did that weekly pregnancy update. So I think it was the same thing as how I related to those original girls that I followed. Yeah. Some more people kind of joined in. And my dad has, well, he had MS. 
Uh, he had a fall that summer. And kind of the way that seasons work with school is like summers, if you're going to transition, is the time to transition. And I just realized he needed to move to very full-time care. I also had two little kids at home that I had guilt over leaving because my job required very frequent travel. I was traveling all the time. <laughs> what, were you um, what the heck did you have, have to travel for? Like conferences or like? Yeah, conf honestly, there was so many conferences. Or just when it comes to recruiting, I would oh, have okay. to go to different colleges and universities and you know speak to people or manage uh, the people who were recruiting and kind of see them in action and coach them. And that's on. fun when you don't have kids. But when you start to have kids, you're like, oh. Well, I still, I enjoy, travel is one of my love languages. I joke, it's like one Gary Chapman didn't discover. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I still enjoyed aspects of it, but it's hard every single time. Oh my gosh. Leave. It's no, bittersweet. Yeah, I, I mean, from... Like, I always tell people, I don't remember Charlie from zero to two because I was gone all the time yeah. traveling. And it, it's like something like you can't ever get that time back mm -hmm. ever. It's like I can't regret it, you know, and I still do love to travel for work and stuff. But I do not travel as much now because they need you more as you get, as they get older. Yes. You know? Yes. So, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you're in this, like, role. In summer, your dad gets sick. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, so he had a fall. And I truly just prayed. Like that month, I said, God, if I am able to just do YouTube, because I had been making, I had gotten some offers for some things, and it was truly side money. It was like, this is our fun vacation money, or if I wanted to update something around the house, yeah. I just use it as fun, because I had that steady income coming in from my job. And I just prayed. I was like, if I can be with my kids more and take care of my dad this month, you know, I'm going to have, I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to make as much on YouTube as I would my salary job. And I'm not kidding you, the next day, I got a slew of emails that it was double what I was making at my other job. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I heard Sign. you. Yeah. And honestly, I'm so glad I did because within a matter of months, my dad went on hospice. Mm -hmm. And I think if anybody is listening who's followed, they kind of know that it just took a huge toll on me. It took a toll on a lot. But I think because of the community on YouTube, like, they support me as much as you know, they say, oh, you support me because you got me motivated to clean or you inspired me to decorate and you helped make my home and my family so happy. Like, they supported me so that I could be with my dad and they gave me time I never would have had. Like, I would have been gone every week traveling mm -hmm. and I would not have had those conversations with my dad. So I'm just so thankful. And, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> couldn't so, feel more lucky. So he, I mean, with MS, he was still talking to you and stuff like that. It was just a decline in his body. Yes. I mean, he was a fighter. It was not, he passed away. Father's Day of 2019. So he literally fought from his fall in August. It was the very last day of July, but August is when he went into rehab. By September, he was put on hospice. They thought yeah. they were like, we don't know how much longer. So was he in a home or was he at? Yes, he was in an intensive nursing. Okay. Yeah, because of everything that was going mm -hmm. on. That's where I said he, he was a fighter. And I think he showed me. moments with him. Yeah, I mean, really from August until June, I mean, there was so many calls I would get from the doctors, like, we think it's probably going to be a couple weeks or, like, maybe only one more month or, like, we're seeing these signs. And he would every single time, like, rise up again and, like, still be there. Now, and where's your mom in this? Um, my parents are divorced. So, oh. Yeah. So you were his, like, person? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Where was your mom at? Like, is, are they close at all? No. Still? Okay. Yeah. They, like, completely, yeah, after the divorce, didn't have contact. How long have they been so. divorced? I I'm was, so nosy. you know, it's fine. And I share everybody, this everywhere. Well, everybody's, everybody listening is wanting to know these things. So. And I'm sure, too, like other people just relate. Like, let's oh, yeah. face it, like the divorce rate is like 50%. Yeah. So I'm sure there's other people. Um, it was two weeks after I went to college. Oh my gosh, so you were an adult. I was in college. And wow. I think the hardest part, my sister was in seventh grade. Okay. So it just felt like the two of us couldn't even at least be there for each other. Uh, so we all kind of processed it. Like, I think that was the hardest part. And sorry if I get a little bit emotional. But it's okay. We were this, like, lovely family unit. And to kind of have to all process it separately, because we did. Like, I was away. My dad immediately, he went into assisted living at that point. And, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and then my mom, she's a full-time working mom. My sister's in middle school. So it was kind of like... Everybody kind of broke, and I think that's just what's so sad about divorce. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, though, like, there's stuff you learn from it, and it's helped me in my marriage, yeah. right, to know, like, these are the things that really matter. These are the things that I want to fight for or work hard on and make sure that 
for my kids that they have something different too, yeah. right? So everything oh happens gosh. for a reason, but that doesn't mean it's easy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But I mean, how do you think that that helped you become where you are today? Honestly, it's, it's so multifaceted what mm -hmm. I learned for it. I think one, that I just want to fight for my marriage in every way, shape, or form possible, especially because I chose to bring kids into it. Yeah. Um, and I just know it's going to impact them and the rest of their lives. And to me, it just like is just family is everything. I think that's why I even I'm just so driven to be able to do what I do. Because if I can figure out the ways to have more time with my family, you never know at any point when it's going to get you know, taken away from you. Mm -hmm. oh. So the fact that my dad also, I mean, he was only 67 years old when he passed away. which So young. Yeah. And just to think, okay, I want to make the most of every single moment that I'm given with my family while mm -hmm. they're this age and for as long as I possibly can. Yeah. So. I love yeah. that. I love how you're, like, totally putting a smile on right now, too. That's totally you, right? That's me. Yep. I always try to make the positive smile and keep going and... Well, I think that's what you had to do, right? So that's also what it taught you was that, like, hey, like, life goes on. Like, even yes. though I have these things going on, um, I, I'm not giving up. Right. Like, I'm going to continue to go. Like, you had your biggest year ever, right, this last year yeah. when your dad passed away? I mean, which is just what's crazy. That's where I tell you God I literally, I literally everything. Have chills. Yeah. Yes. Like, this is all because of him. And so let's talk about that because I think yeah. a lot of people want to resist that. They want to resist that it is that easy, right? I mean, obviously, the work that you did wasn't easy at all. But you had to, like, do some tr sort of trusting in him, right? You, like, you go, hey, you know, I don't know how this is going to happen, but, like, God's got this. How did you get to that spot? Like, talk to me about your faith. Um, I feel like it was instilled in me from both of my parents and from my grandparents ever since I was very, very young. And mm -hmm. I feel so lucky to be able to say that, that I just feel like it's always come very, very naturally. I will tell you, I feel like it was very much tested, though. And that's where I would say to anybody who's like, I'm questioning things or this doesn't feel right. Like, at my lowest of low, I had the highest anxiety of my life. Like, normally I always had a full plate my whole life. I did a ton of things. And in school, would take every single class I could without study halls if I could yeah. and join all these organizations. And I never dealt with, like, the anxiety that I felt when I was really questioning Seeing my dad, it just felt like he was being tortured, honestly, at like the very end with like how much pain he was in. And to just get very candid, I remember at one point I even said to my like family, like, you know, God's own son died on a cross for, you know, a day, whereas like dad's been here for weeks in pain. Oh like my gosh. how is this, like how can this be possible? Like yeah. this just doesn't seem fair. Um, but like I get it. We all, like, for whatever reason, all of us had things that we needed to just take away and learn from that situation mm -hmm. 100%. And so that's where I would just say, like, I'm just in such a place now where I see so many signs for my dad. Like, I talked to you even yeah. on the way here. I saw names of things that came up all the time in our past history. And I just 100% have been like, okay, I'm, like, regrounded again. And, like, I'm sorry, but I think everybody's faith is going to get tested, and it was really hard going through that. And I, again, it was just sickening. I felt so anxious. But, like, you have to get to a place where once you can find that again, it truly does kind of put you back at peace. Mm -hmm. Aw, well, I'm so yeah. proud of you. Yeah. Seriously, thanks. you're amazing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to switch. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you totally did. Okay. Just make yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think people listening in, like, just to, like, see what I'm seeing is that, like, I truly believe that you choose your parents when you come here um, because that's an empowering feeling to me. So I choose to believe that because I'm, like, I chose to have that experience uh, with my parents. My parents got a divorce when I was five, and, I mean, my parents are still friends today. And, like, my mom, they're so funny. It's so, like, dysfunctional. But they'll now call each other, like, hey, I need money. I need money. Like, and they're, like, they've been divorced for whatever. Uh, how long? I'm trying to think. I, so, divorced for almost 30 years. And they still do that. Um, I'm like, this is the most dysfunctional thing I've ever seen. I'm like, why don't you guys just get married again? My, make my childhood dreams come true. Please. Um, so, I think, like, I chose to have that experience. And I think... You might not realize that now, but you probably chose to have that experience too because this is going to help you for years and years to come in your business, being a parent, being a wife, and that's probably exactly what your dad would want too, right? right? He sounded like an amazing person. He really was. I mean, 
I think it's interesting because I know there's sometimes like the mother-daughter bond and I feel like I definitely have that but also the father-daughter bond was so important and he did so good at making me feel empowered as a woman he would say things all the time to me about hey I want you to join the golf team because someday if you're like a businesswoman I don't want the guys to leave you out of a conversation on the golf course. Like, I want you to go and hold oh your own. Oh, my gosh. Like, Who he just was, even think to like, say he that? Did. That's amazing. So it just always made me feel like he believes in me and, like, doesn't not only be like, oh, yeah, dream whatever. He's like, no, when you're going to do this someday, yeah. <laughs> you need to make yeah. sure you can handle this. He really so. set you up for success. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Okay, so you're on YouTube, and now you're like, because I, I already see this about you, like, you're you're a go-getter. I feel like, are you a little bit competitive? Too. Only like, you myself. want to be the best. You want to be the best. No. What? I and I, I think it's probably a funny thing to say because even though I whenever I take a personality thing, it's like achiever. Yeah, I mean, you're yes. yeah. I'm definitely an achiever. Like I want to be able to look back on my life and be like, you did great things. But I'm gonna tell you, I think sometimes when you say I'm gonna be the best, it's sort of that effect of I didn't bring people along with me who could mm. also be successful. That's a good point. Because you kind of like drop people off or like pit yourself against people and I just don't like that the only person I want to be against is myself and just be better than who I was yesterday and continue to do that yeah I love that and I but I also think in this day and age you can be competitive and because there's so many people that can be at the top with you right like you know what I'm saying right but yeah you're a total achiever I love that (laughs) okay I love it because now like you've done something that most people will never do you know 250,000 subscribers on YouTube but that's probably now your benchmark like you're like this that's nothing we're going to 500,000 like right right you're going you're striving for more what the heck how did you get to 250,000 subscribers I'm at 700 okay like hi help me out um I would definitely say collabing with other people is huge see that's the same way with podcasting yes it doesn't work like every time I post on Instagram about my podcast like nobody even pays attention but if I go on another person's podcast then my podcast downloads will go up right so, it's so the same. YouTube okay. is sort of a similar thing because I think that's how people get to see you and hear just somebody else's interactions with you too to know like, oh, okay, she does seem interesting. I'll go check her out. So tell me, what does a YouTube collaboration look like? Because podcasting, it's just, you know, we, we do a podcast swap, we'll do interviews. YouTube, I can't watch interviews on YouTube. I'm like, this is boring. But tell me, well, you guys are watching now. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think sometimes, because sometimes I'll listen to certain things on YouTube, like a podcast. Like, I just set it down while I'm cleaning yeah. or something. Okay. So I think it can just be your medium over where you get the podcast. But what do you do? Um, if it's somebody who's close in person, it could be something where I'm going to go over your house and help you actually clean or decorate something. A lot of them, though, because we're all over the world, that's what's so cool about YouTube. Like, just on Monday, I collabed with somebody who lives in the UK. Yeah, I saw we, that on your Instagram. I yeah, like, oh so we'll just send each other footage okay. of our videos, and I kind of shared, here's what I really love about her, her channel, her home, how she's like as a mom, so that people watch, she can still see a little clip and be like, oh, I want to go see what her decorations look like or how she cleans her house. Or I lo- and so like how that. do you qualify? Like, do they have to have a certain amount of subscribers? Like with, I feel like with podcasts, like you almost have to get like people like that are at the same level as you. Um, tell me about that. I think there's definitely a courtesy with that, but you know, it's kind of one of those things, the more you grow or like the bigger you get, there's just less people there. So to me, I've always just done it by, if I see somebody's like video and I'm like, wow, I was actually inspired by that. Or like they had me watch that whole video because it was really, really good. I don't care the number that's next to your subscriber count. And I actually did have some people like way back when they first started, I watched a couple videos and was like, you're going to be huge. Can we collab, please? And I'm not going to have more subscribers than me now. So, like, you know what I wow. mean? Sometimes it's just that whole thing of, like, you... Just if you know that they're going to add value to your audience, collab yeah. with them. Yeah. Okay, that is a And great it's the same thing. with brands. I don't mm-hmm. know how much, like, you work with brands, but at least that's my stance on it. I will not promote a product unless I'm, like, oh, that I'm actually really love. using this myself or, like, have tried it and been, like, this really works and I love it myself. Because I think my audience would instantly know, like, they she would, would never use that. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so recap number one. If you want to grow your YouTube or really any platform, you want to focus on collaborating with other people on the platform. And yeah. if you want to do it via YouTube, you guys can share footage. I love, love, love that idea. And then on the footage, they just have your name, your YouTube name. Right. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, now what else did you do? I know playlists are a big thing on YouTube, too. How many playlists do you have? 
I actually couldn't even tell you, but I definitely have a, lot. a cleaning playlist, organizing playlist, different seasonal decor playlists. Do you and clean out your stuff? Is, or is YouTube, is that like a no-no on YouTube? I, yeah, I think everybody pretty much keeps all of their stuff on YouTube because even the initial reason I started was to look back on it. Yeah, and that's what I would tell you is for anybody, whether it's you want to start YouTube, an Instagram, a blog, I can tell you the stuff that I even sometimes a year ago look at can make me cringe. The stuff I look at yeah. three years ago, I'm cringing even harder. Yeah. Like you just have to get started and keep on figuring out ways to improve because if you try to be an expert from the very beginning, you're instantly going to crash or like you're holding yourself to mm -hmm. way too high of a standard. And that's where I would just say, even people even comment now, like part of the reason you grow is because, oh, I see your videos are getting even better. Like you kind of have figured out what we like a little bit more. Yeah. Like you've shown us some more or new things that you didn't used to do in the past that's getting us really excited. Aww. So that's where I would just say to anybody, if they're like nervous about doing it, you just have to like rip off the Band-Aid do it, and you're totally. going to learn every video you make right. to make it even better. I totally agree with that. And, like, I everybody's first version is a disaster. Like, my <laughs> first version of Mommy Millionaire, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's embarrassing. Like, I actually feel bad for those people that bought that course for me because it's like, you know, everybody has stuff that's not good, and then it gets better. And then you yes. have people that are, like, obsessed with your brand and, like, completely probably loyal to your channel now. Okay. And I love them so much. They're called my loves, by the way. If, like, you're my a loves. subscriber on my channel, my you're loves. one of my loves, yes. And so, okay, I think that's important because, like, I call my people mommy millionaires, obviously. I think it's important with a community, like, that they feel. So do you have a Facebook group that goes along with it? I do have a Facebook group. And, and I will tell you, I think YouTube, though, is its own very active community So you space. just, you get to know people just in the comments? Oh, yes. Okay. Comments, Do you do the sure. YouTube stories, too? You can do stories on YouTube now. And what's interesting, different than Instagram, they stay up for one week. Oh. So they don't burn out in 24 hours. Do you so, go on that and do it? Every time I'll like post a video or sometimes if I am like hanging out in the comments in a certain moment, I'll be like, go to the comments now and I can actually chat with you. My so. kids, like when they're like doing anything, they're always saying like, go to the comments, leave a comment here. Like when they're just talking, I'm like, you're not yeah. a vlogger yet. Like it's... Anyway, I'm so I always learn from them. Like now when I'm like going live on something, I'm like, hey, leave me a comment because I sound like one of my kids. My son, serious, clearly I must say it all the time. His new thing, if I ever have him on the camera, he'll be like, okay, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> I'll be like, do I say that that like, much? Yep, yep. <laughs> but I think that's a good point when you have to constantly tell people what to do. Like your audience yes. needs to be told what to do. 100% and that's what I would say to any person if you're like, why am I not growing? Ask people to share your stuff. Say, if you have another friend who might like what I'm doing, please share it with them. Or can you share this on your IG stories? Yes. Because then everybody then who's watching their IG stories can see it. Or, hey, if you like my video, it helps a ton if you share it over on your Facebook too. So do you think that YouTube is saturated? Like, is it too late to get started? You know, I've heard other people talk about that, but I would say no. And I would say the only other point I would have to somebody that we didn't touch on yet is you're going to keep getting better, but you do need to have your focus on are you always making your video quality and editing quality even better to keep up? Like once you kind of have mm -hmm. it under your belt after giving it a couple goes, you do need to figure out how you're going to kind of enhance Did you your... teach yourself how to edit everything? I was a broadcast journalism teacher. So you already knew how to do that. So okay, you guys learned how to do that. I learned, I mean, I learned how to, I think, be a very fast editor um, for news stories. Yeah. I taught myself iMovie. I didn't learn that in school, but I knew the principles of shooting and kind of editing and packaging some things. So is that so. what you use to edit your videos is iMovie? iMovie. Okay. And how long does it take you? Like if you were to do, because I know you're like filming like all the time. How, how many new videos do you put out a week? The filming takes a lot longer. Okay. Because if you just think about the time it takes for you to clean your entire house or like decorate an entire space or honestly something to decorating, it's the prep. It's the like making my mood boards and knowing, okay, this is the decor oh gosh, I'm so ordering. This is the decor that I have. Here's how I think it so will So do you ever show that behind the scenes or no? I've shown a little bit. Like I've shown some of the outfit coordination behind the scenes because that's another piece of it of like, okay, if we're taking family photos and I want this to all kind of go with what I'm doing for a certain brand that kind of has to fit into their color scheme too. There's do you, a lot of thought you, behind it. Yeah. Do you film and edit all your own stuff right now? I film, edit all my own stuff. I do work with a photographer who takes the family pictures, um, and she's amazing and such a good friend to me. So it's kind Aww. of fun. But yeah, I film, edit, and do everything myself. So when it comes to YouTube, I think people, like, you, you've touched on the fact that you don't have to be perfect to get started. But the editing really is what sets you apart from, like, the, the amateurs, right? I think 
So tell me about that. Use everything in iMovie. You create mood boards beforehand. What the heck? <laughs> um, I love that. Actually, somebody that's coming to talk at our mastermind talks a ton about mood boards. And that was the first time I'm like, what? People really do that in real life? Okay, perfect. So on your YouTube channel, is it important to be consistent? Like you have to go like every Monday because with podcasting, it's very much like that. Like you have to yes. show up for your audience. And is it the same way? Yes. Okay. I would say part of the reason why people can grow is because their audience does know I can tune in at this time on this day for a new video. And I would just say that's kind of how YouTube looks at things. They'll be like, okay, the first hour, how many people showed up? How many people commented? How many people liked things? And at the end of the day, YouTube is there to make money for YouTube, right? right. So they're interested in, well, if more people are going to watch this video the first hour, we'll start suggesting it more with other people's videos that maybe are on a similar topic. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it is definitely in your advantage. If you're like, I really want to grow my YouTube channel, tell your audience when they can show up and be there for you because they'll be there for you. They love you. They're there to support you. And so, okay. For, so those of you guys that are listening in right now, do you see her mindset? Like she doesn't think anything but that. And I think that's really important that that's the story that you're buying into is that people want to help me. People love me. Like, and a lot of people that are listening in right now, they struggle with that like mindset that like people aren't going to listen. People don't care. And you're always going to find proof for what you believe in your life. So you believe that people love you and support you. And so you constantly are finding proof that that is true for you. And if you need to look at data points, like if I'm a very data driven person, because right, sometimes it's easy to let the emotion, like you read something that you're like, oh, they picked on me, or like they said something really yeah. hurtful. And it's easy to fixate on that. But if I actually probably totaled up all my comments on YouTube, and I kid you not, I think it would be less than 1% that is a hurtful, hateful troll comment compared to, you did a good job. I liked how you did this. I learned this from you. You helped me do this. Like, it is truly, like, such a minuscule amount, but it's so easy for our brains to fixate on oh that, right? And totally. feel like, I'm doing this wrong or I should fix this. Whereas if you can switch to the growth mindset and be like, all these mm -hmm. people love this, so I'm going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. You'll, that's when you start to see that success build and build and build. I love that, you guys. So go for the data. Don't just focus on the one thing. I get the same way. Like, out of all of my reviews on pod, on my podcast, I've gotten, like, two bad reviews. And one was from a Donald Trump podcast that I did. And it wasn't even saying, hey, I like Donald Trump. Like, I was just reviewing his book, right? And people went crazy. They're like, leave Newport, not people, one person, right? You see what my mind is? Yeah, did? one person. One person. I'm like, people went crazy. It was one person that went psycho and left a mean review. Um, God bless her heart. And, like, I, w I went, like, in this, like, rabbit hole for, like, 30 minutes. And Kimmy was like, are you really seriously doing this right now? And so then she pulled up my reviews and was like, this is what this person said. This is what this person said. I'm like, oh, all right, you're right. But it is so, our minds, our unconscious minds are prone yes. to negativity. Yes. And so it's just like we need people in our life and tools in our life in order to redirect us. Yes. So that's huge. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. What if you were to be just starting YouTube right now, knowing all of the things that you know now, but you had to start from scratch, what would be the first thing that you did? Um, I would make sure I knew, because one of the things I would go back and 100% change because I was doing it per personal figure out what my niche was on YouTube. Okay. So I would figure out if I'm going to do just like the cleaning and decorating, do I want to do more vlog style and sort of show my whole life and my day to day and really narrow it down. And if you kind of focus on your niche, eventually you can start sprinkling more in or like weaving in other things that you become passionate about because you have the audience that's there. But I think it's really confusing for an audience to be like, you did cooking one day and then the next day there was a vlog and then there was cleaning and you then kind of have pocketed audiences where they're like, well, I just like your vlogs, so I'm just only going to watch your vlogs. And it starts skewing your data because you're like, why aren't these videos doing well? Okay. Even though the comments might all be really, really positive, it's because only a certain audience who only comes for those things is coming. So, so niche down. Yes. So, and then how many videos would you do a week? Um, I would start out doing two. Okay. Um, I think, you know, kind of back in the YouTube heyday, it was really, really good for your channel. YouTube likes seeing you do something every single day. YouTube actually, though, realized, wow, we're, like, really harming creators' mental health. Because, like, the go-getters, overachievers yeah. were like, okay, I'm going to pop out a video every single day. Yeah. And now they're like, hey, it's actually okay if you're only posting once a week or twice a week. 
that's not going to ne negatively impact you in the algorithm or help you in the I algorithm. I think Instagram wrote that memo too. Instagram's doing the same thing. Yeah, because I only have been posting once a week now. Yeah. Um, it's nice. You can kind of. Oh, I, I, every day <laughs> to create breath. something that was like life changing is hard. You yeah, know? It, it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I want to I want to get crystal clear with you on one more thing about YouTube, yeah. which is how you make money. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did you? And I know you started to get these emails, so people started to notice you. Right. You weren't reaching out to people. Right, which is, that's like what is the crazy thing I feel like about it is yeah. advertisers are so ready to jump on YouTube. That is what brands want is to see their products being used in videos. Because if you think about it, if you like saw your girlfriend, if you went over to her house and she was actually doing something, wouldn't you be so much more likely to go get it than you just being like, oh. Oh, 100%. Yeah, like I yeah. saw it in a picture. Like it's yeah. just not as impactful. Totally. Um, so it's definitely what brands are seeking. You're really talking me into to doing a YouTube channel right now. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, but this is because everybody's always like, how are you doing this? You get Google ad revenue. Yes. So there is a difference between kids' YouTube right now. So I just want to make that clear. If you want to do a kids' channel, those videos aren't monetized the way adult videos are on YouTube. You can make, make way more money as an adult. Right. Okay. Because you get Google ad revenue because Google puts video ads they can sprinkle them in between your video, before, after your video. I have a question. Yeah. Can kids be in the adult videos and you can monetize them? But there's a little bit of so, oh, kind I'm of figuring that this. out. Um, you know, with the new COPA standards that YouTube kind of violated those terms and had to pay a really hefty fine. Okay. Most creators in the adult space are saying, you know, as long as the kid isn't the star soul star actor it's probably okay for them to be in the videos but I think everybody's just kind of at least in the cleaning decorating niche is just like well my kid doesn't really have to be in anything while I'm cleaning and decorating or they can be in a small portion so they're of kind of it. just like playing it safe yeah keeping the kid out okay yeah that's good to know so talk to me about how um you they pay per view that you get is that right no okay, it is if an me. ad is ran on the video and your viewers watch it so that's where I would say when your audience loves mm. and supports you, it's a known thing to be like, I'm not skipping ads on her channel. I never knew that. So now when I go to your channel, okay, that yeah. is really good. I always skip the ads. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have got time for this. Yeah. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. So it's like, I'm going to throw you a bone and watch this commercial for you. Right. I so. love that. So they're doing that for you. Yeah. Oh, so that's how you really know. You're like, these people really love me. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it really is. It's such like a sweet community yes. of people. Yes. And truly, I feel like what motivates me so much is, I, I mean, I hope people say I did this because I saw you do it, but I also have people who say like, you know, I have this disability and I can't do it. So it's so cool to live vicariously through you and imagine like how I could decorate my house. Aww. So do you know what I mean? It's like sometimes I think on YouTube, there's this really cool, like, people just love getting to try something yep. and feel like they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's really oh, cool. I love that. Yeah. Okay, that is really special. Yeah. So you're, I know you have huge goals in 2020. That's why we're working together. Yeah. Um, but are you going to be focusing on reaching out to your, like, dream brands too? Or tell me about I that. I think, so that's always been a part of it. So it's like, yes, you're getting the Google ad money, and then you also work with the brands who will pay, depending on if it's a, a video just for the brand, is what's going to pay the most, but oftentimes your audience really isn't going to like that. So most YouTubers don't do videos like that. Okay. Unless it's like, okay, my people know I love my Apothic wine. If Apothic wine was like, we want you to do a video with different sangria recipes using Apothic, my audience knows and they're turning up for that. <laughs> she, she just changed, like, look, you can tell she really likes this wine. Oh, it's, it's been a joke in multiple things of like still not sponsored because the amount that I talk about it and <laughs> the fact that they have That's never paid hilarious. me a dime, it's, it's a joke. Um, okay, so t so tell me about how that works. Like yeah. with, because I know like on social media, you can negotiate paid, like paid things depending on how many views you get, you know, like that whole thing. How does it work on YouTube how you get paid? Like with when you're really working with a brand? Does it go just based on views? I mean, there are some agencies, because it's usually a brand agency working out. Sometimes you work directly with the brand and their marketing and advertising mm -hmm. team. A lot of agencies go by like a CPM. So they're like basing it off of if your average views on your channel are this, here's what we would pay you for okay. an integration. Um, sometimes though with brands, it truly is. They just know, wow, you're so loyal. Sometimes it is that people have tweeted at them and said, I mean, it's funny, Apothic finally gifted me some wine because they said they had so many people tag them on their Instagram stories for me that they wow. gifted me wine. So sometimes it is your people that a brand finally notices and is like, okay, like we want to collaborate with you. So they might pay you a little differently 
because they know that you're a champion of their brand. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. It's more worth their investment. Yeah. Um, what's the most you made? You don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but hopefully you do. Um, what's the most you've made on a brand deal? And you don't have to tell us what the brand was. I just want to like give people an idea. Um, so I've made five figures for one video. Can I say that? Yeah, but like five figures, is it like 10,000? Because that's the low end of a five figure. Or is it like 50,000? No. Okay. So yeah, sorry. That was kind of, so the most I've made on just one video at this point was 15,000. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's amazing. Okay. Because I brands. like, I like that. So that was And I'm sorry. I, should, I honestly, I shouldn't be coy about it, but I will tell you this. If anyone in the YouTube space ever reaches out to me, just because you don't ever want to, I think, upset an agency or a brand or make oh, them they, think anything. Yeah. Um, but if somebody does reach out to me, and vice versa. There's been times where I'm like, you work with this brand or you've worked with Would this they agency. You? Were they fair or did they go low or, you know, how yeah. did you feel about it? And that's how I kind of do my litmus test to know like, okay, here's like somebody who's paying us what we're worth at this point. But it is yeah, a really hard space. There's not like a union for YouTubers no, to I be like, totally here's true. the going rate. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have reached out to me on like for my social media and Kimmy, who's my assistant, yeah. who you've probably talked to. She negotiates everything, and like most of the time, she just tells people no because everybody lowballs us. You know, I have really high engagement, and I'm like, I'm not doing anything for less than this. And they're like, Well, because you don't have millions of followers, they're not going to pay you that. I'm like, Well, then I'm not posting about it. Thank you. Even if it's something I would like, but I'm like, I like, sorry, no. And that's what I would say because this is a woman dominated industry, and that's where we have to break the like, Oh, I'm just going to accept it because at least Heck it's something. No. Like, no, please. I, see a lot I say of to every person, that. Yeah. please. Stand your ground because I can guarantee you if you know what your worth is and you tell them and you want to work with a good company because then they'll come back to you right. and want to keep working yeah. with you, they come back. And I ha I've had to do that multiple times. I've been like, look, this is my rate. So, you know, I, I kind of know I'm not going to accept anything that goes under this. And they generally come back and be like, and when you have room yes. in your budget, let me know because I would love to work with you. And they come back. I love that. So I'm super excited for all the things that you've taught everybody today. Um, what is one thing, if people could take anything away from this podcast today, what would you want them to take away? Um, that's a good, I should have prepared a more eloquent answer. No, because this, um, is, this is what makes podcasting fun is that it doesn't have to be perfect. See, it's different than YouTube because it could just be like, whatever. <laughs> well, so the one thing that I would just hope somebody would take away is if you feel like you're stalling on anything that's a dream in your head, don't stall and just keep manifesting what you want your dreams to be. And as a faith-based person, that to me means praying on those dreams mm -hmm. too, of like, please give me an answer. You know, is this the right direction for me to be going in? How quickly do you want me to get there? Because I do think that, you know, he's answered in a really profound way in mm -hmm. my life. And I think possible for anyone and just don't ever think that you can't do something because I guarantee you if your like mind is really set on it and you pray on it and you work hard enough you'll get there it might not be in the timeline you want but you know what I yeah mean? so it's like ditch it. the timeline and just be obsessed with the way God's gonna roll it out for you I love that yeah oh my gosh so good so where can people find you so on YouTube, my name is Brianna Kay. On every other social, I'm Bits of Brie. That's also my blog. It's bitsofbreeblog.com. Yay. All right, you guys. So I hope you loved, loved, loved this episode. If you're listening to the podcast, take a screenshot and share it with your friends. And just to recap here, Brie made it very clear that it is not too late to start YouTube. It is not too late to start anything that you've been dreaming about. The time is now and it's never going to be a perfect time. So just get going. And I really love the first thing that she said was collaborate with other people on that platform. So I'm going to hit hard on that. The second thing is stand your group ground when it comes to brands. Like don't take anything less than what you know you're truly worth. And the third thing that stood out to me is the consistency on the way you edit your videos too. I think that's very important. She taught herself all of these things on iMovie, you guys. Hello. Um, if she can do it, a teacher from Cleveland, Ohio, you guys can do this too. So thank you, Mommy Millionaires, for listening in. <laughs>